Good morning, everybody. Welcome to our expert overview uh, series on the logistic and industrial real estate sector for Thailand. It's a pleasure to have you. Um, we'll start with a brief presentation on um, PFDL and who we are. So we started um, in 2005 in Thailand. We are a regional firm, um, nine countries, 12, 12 offices, uh, more than 170 legal and tax advisors. Um, started in a region in 1995, in 2005 in Thailand. Uh, we are focusing on six core practice areas, um, M&A corporate and commercial, uh, energy mining infrastructure, corporate um, real estate and construction, um, dispute resolution, tax and customs. We are also have regional desks serving our clients across the region uh, with our core area of, areas of expertise. Um, we are, Paul and I, part of the real estate and construction practice. Um, and I will let Paul introduce himself uh, before we start discussing the topic for this webinar. Yeah, hi, good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us uh, on this lovely Tuesday morning. Um, Paul Bolodarski, I'm the deputy head of our regional real estate practice. Um, I've worked across the region in uh, Thailand and in Vietnam. Uh, you know, we've worked on a lot of different projects for a lot of interesting developments over the years, and, and hopefully uh, you'll get some insight into some of the issues that we, we understand in this discussion. Thank you, Paul. Uh, before we start, you will see some uh, windows popping up during the discussion uh, with questions. So you can answer these questions to help us focusing on uh, your concerns, um, either directly in the pop-up window or in the live chat. And then we'll uh, take the questions from there. We will keep the questions for the end of the session. Uh, and same, you can post your question in uh, the live chat. So, Paul, uh, first uh, question, what are uh, generally the legal and tax considerations that you would um, discuss with investors when entering the logistics and industrial real estate market in Thailand? So, generally from uh, the beginning, if we're looking at someone that's entering into the Thai market for the first time, the, the primary question is going to be legal structuring in terms of acquiring the uh, manufacturing or logistics facilities that they plan to develop. Um, it's a, a lot of different options in Thailand because you have different kind of promotional categories like Board of Investment, you have the uh, Industrial Estates Authority of Thailand, and you have EEC uh, potential promotion opportunities. So it's about first assessing how to enter the market, uh, what rights you have to acquire the real estate that you're looking to develop, uh, and making sure that you're clear about the tax incentives that come with those types of promotions. Uh, if you're looking at uh, a joint venture, you know, what are some of the, the drawbacks and benefits of that kind of an arrangement in terms of the, the types of property that you can acquire? And then we start to look at more specifically the types of sites that you're trying to acquire. So there's a fundamental difference between a site that's located within an industrial estate uh, and a site which is located out of an industrial state. Of course, there are uh, some similarities in terms of the issues that we would be looking at. Uh, you're always looking at, of course, access routes. Uh, if you're looking for logistics in particular, access is going to be very important in terms of how quickly you can get from your facility to port. So you wanna understand what the access routes are from there. Um, and then you have some standard types of real estate uh, limitations in Thailand in terms of understanding the title history for the property, whether or not the property is legally zoned to conduct the business operations that the client intends to conduct. Uh, and, you know, for existing investors in the market, uh, one of the big things is always understanding the, the history of the property, 
and whether or not the, the title is clear for purposes of, of new development. Uh, when you're looking at an existing project, again, you're looking at similar types of considerations. So in order to acquire an existing factory, you may have to make certain types of investment if you're a foreign investor that's looking to acquire it uh, as a wholly foreign owned entity or majority foreign owned entity. Or you may be considering things like Amity Treaty status if you're an American uh, entity that's looking to enter the market. Um, and then from a Thai perspective, it's about understanding what assets you're acquiring, the state of those assets, and really checking the historical records. So as a, a sort of an example, we've gone through uh, a factory review for land due diligence and discovered that there was a public road cutting through the factory facilities. And that's simply because at the time that the construction was was done was completed on the property, uh, no one was paying attention to the fact that there was a public road recorded across the title, but not in fact existing. So even though there was a public road uh, listed on the title itself, there was no public road there in fact, and that sort of let led to some issues in terms of trying to get clarity on the title history get clarity on what could be built and understanding what the potential risks are. Uh, so looking at the market uh, from a due diligence perspective on real estate, it's really about checking all of the historical records, making sure that your zoning and planning permissions are correct, checking the uh, uh, checking the construction permits to make sure that they've been issued properly and for the correct construction. Um, and going through these types of, of checks on the property to understand what it is that you're acquiring and making sure that it's all legally operable. Of course, and again, what would be some practical recommendations on the considerations that investors need to be aware of prior to entering the market? So I think in terms of practical considerations, I think Thailand can sometimes be a bit tricky, especially for acquisition of properties which are not within an industrial estate. Uh, you know, what we've seen is some interesting situations where a public road declaration has been declared across a property, but that public road doesn't actually connect to the wider highway system. So even though you might find that the title is connected to a public road, that public road doesn't connect to the wider system to be able to be useful for purposes of uh, a logistics facility or a manufacturing site. Um, you know, other practical, more practical than than legal considerations is just looking at the site, understanding uh, what are your setback requirements? Are you in a floodplain zone? Is there any remediation that you need to conduct on the property in terms of uh, putting it to use for your intended purposes. Are you going to need pooling ponds for the type of acquisition that you're you're conducting or new investment that you're conducting? Uh, and understanding what are the minimum road widths that you need in order to qualify, for instance, for relevant licenses that go along with your your manufacturing facility. So for some types of facilities, you're going to require a certain road width uh, in order to be able to utilize it for that purpose. Uh, and that's a, a matter of law and just in, in terms of a matter of practical consideration when looking to acquire or develop that kind of property. Okay. So I think you'll see, yes, the second question on poll question on uh, your pop-up window. So please, everybody, uh, help us and answer this question that will help us for further discussions. Um, in terms of the recent changes for uh, to the law that affects uh, the sector in Thailand, what what would you have to say? So I think that there's been a number of changes which are interesting. Um, I think primarily the more recent change, although it's not that recent anymore, is the EEC regulations, uh, which are promoting new investment categories, especially in the the Eastern Economic Corridor. Um, you know what we've seen is a lot of new investments in that area. But one of the issues that comes up frequently in looking at the law is that the regulatory framework is not entirely clear on the types of investments that you're conducting. So for instance, for a logistics facility, while logistics is one of the core categories under the EEC promotion, the regulatory framework for what you're permitted to conduct in terms of your business activities is not yet clear. This is something that uh, we've experienced firsthand in discussing with the EEC, the types of activities that a logistics provider can conduct. 
So for some logistics providers, it's going to be leasing out facilities, which are going to be utilized by uh, smaller logistics firms, or you're creating a logistics site for uh, logistics companies in Thailand to be able to deliver either within Thailand or outside of Thailand. Uh, but one of the issues that comes up is, is what you're permitted to, to do under a logistics promotion within the EEC. Other things that, are, that, are been, that have been interesting is uh, the regulatory framework for uh, new investment categories under BOI, which are regularly updated in terms of the new investment criteria for certain types of business activities. And of course, the goals of the Thai government in terms of the types of industry uh, that will be uh, brought into Thailand or that the government is trying to encourage to invest in Thailand. And then we have uh, more sort of ancillary related legal updates, which are more COVID related, which is incentives that the government has passed temporarily for COVID. So for instance, there may be additional tax incentives for conducting certain types of investments. There may be a waiver of import duties on certain types of equipment and products uh, that the government is trying to encourage uh, that these products be brought in as part of uh, their COVID relief measures. And we've seen that uh, in terms of discussions just this week with the government looking at waiving, for instance, alcohol uh, uh, tariffs or, or reducing alcohol tariffs for import and uh, distribution within Thailand. So there have been a number of changes, especially on the, the COVID-19 related front in terms of the types of promotional activities. The other is just, uh, I think, cl more clarity in terms of the licensing regime for uh, customs free zones uh, for these types of, uh, for bonded warehousing, especially as Thailand is pushing for uh, you know, the Thai region to be more of a, a regional logistics center. Uh, there's expansion of the ports that's happening in Thailand uh, right now. There's expansion of rail. There's expansion of, uh, 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 you know, additional roads in terms of facilities leading from factories to ports that I think is, is, is interesting. And the legal framework and the legal developments there have been uh, very encouraging from my viewpoint. Yes, and, and given the uh, the current situation, and particularly with the um, uh, um, COVID uh, pandemic, uh, where do you think all this is going, um, the sector and the market for the coming years? So I think, you know, what we've seen is the Thai economy really getting hit by COVID-19, uh, especially this year. I think in 2020, uh, we were very lucky to be spared a lot of the, the issues that we saw in Europe and the US. Um, and, and I think now we're sort of experiencing this, this drawback in terms of number of cases and, and lockdowns that we didn't really have to experience before. Uh, but with that said, I think we're starting to see uh, things opening up, which is very encouraging. Um, I think what we will see in terms of new development is, uh, I think one of the most interesting aspects of what happened during COVID was this massive shift in emerging markets towards online uh, purchases and sales. And that's something that is not going to, in my view, is not going to be going backwards. I think it certainly helped accelerate that, which means in terms of localized logistics and even international logistics, um, we've seen for Thailand a huge movement towards, you know, uh, groups like Shopee, uh, Lazada, um, that we're seeing massive uh, numbers of orders going through there. And of course, there's the massive shift towards uh, more simplified logistics like Grab and uh, uh, Food Panda and these kinds of food delivery services, um, which are also, I, th I think, should be classified as sort of a logistics update. But um, in terms of regional logistics, I think we're going to see Thailand being developed uh, quite quickly in this sector because we're looking at uh, the port development, uh, we're looking at the road import, uh, improvements and the rail improvements. The big question is going to be uh, what incentives are going to be there for new investors to enter the Thai market as opposed to some of Thailand's now competitors like Vietnam and Indonesia, where they're also making uh, big strides in terms of, of improving infrastructure. Um, so from a very uh, localized, I guess, 
more of an anecdotal uh, perspective, we have seen uh, a pretty big pickup in terms of uh, new potential acquisitions, new potential developments in industrial facilities in Thailand, which is very encouraging. So I'm I'm very optimistic for 2022 in terms of uh, seeing the logistics and the real est- industrial real estate market pick up in Thailand and seeing uh, new incentives coming in and new benefits being promoted by the government to encourage more development here. Thank you. Um, I think we go through our Q&A session and while you do that, uh, we um, will have our third question about uh, topics to be presented for our next uh, next sessions. So uh, for the audience, please feel free to suggest any topic you will see relevant. Uh, we'll start with the Q&A session. Yeah, so I see From, in the... Yeah. Oh, go ahead. No, no, please go ahead. I think we have one question. Yeah, I see from the the meeting chat that we do have a question regarding the consequences if the BOI requirements are not fulfilled in time, despite best endeavors. So in theory, the, the BOI certificate can be revoked by the authorities if you don't complete your investment within the time prescribed in your investment certificate. So you would need to be discussing with the BOI in terms of extending the time frame to implement the project in accordance with the schedule, making sure that you're amending your certificate so that you don't have a situation where the BOI certificate is revoked. I think it's uh, it's not common for the BOI certificate to be revoked. It, you know, it's uh, something that is sort of a last measure uh, if you're not investing in the project correctly. So typically they give you quite a bit of leeway in terms of your investment, but uh, keep in mind that if you're not in compliance with your investment certificate, then you'll need to make sure that you amend it, you discuss with BOI directly and avoid potential consequences for not uh, completing the investment uh, on time and on the schedule. Um, And just coming. So I'm scrolling down, Uh, I think, we have another question also similar to BOI and, and EEC. It's it's really uh, the difference between the incentives are, are based on the types of activities that are available for promotion. So there are additional uh, tax incentives depending on the type of investment that you're conducting in the BOI and EEC. So it's, it's really about comparing the type of project that you're conducting and looking at whether or not the BOI promotion is is more beneficial than the EEC promotion. Uh, The chances are EEC does come with a significantly uh, wider range of promotional benefits. Uh, If you're going to look in that area, it ultimately depends on whether or not EEC makes sense for you in terms of your manufacturing facilities. Uh, But again, it can come down to tax incentives, rights to purchase land. Under the EEC, there's a more broad permission to own residential property. So in terms of developing residential property for lease, uh, there is in theory the the right to conduct that type of activity as long as it's within a promoted EEC uh, zone. So there's there's some interesting benefits that come with the EEC, but with that said, it's not as broad as a BOI. So BOI encompasses a significantly wider range of investment categories for for real estate investment uh, than under the EEC promotion. It just depends, again, on the type of business activity that you plan to conduct. And I think we had uh, one question prior to this regarding the development of robotics in and drones in the industry in Thailand. I think uh, generally we're seeing that shift. I think that that shift has really started a few years ago where especially for automobile manufacturers that they've shifted more towards robotics within their facility. And I think that that trend is going to continue in Thailand uh, and elsewhere in the region as as robotics become cheaper. uh, I think that the shift towards robotics is going to, to continue to happen. In terms of drones, uh, I think we've all been expecting drones for logistics to really start picking up uh, in places like Europe, in Japan, uh, in the US, in China, but I think um, it's gonna take some time in Thailand for that to really pick up. I think the cost of uh, moving products is not quite there to to support a logistics framework based upon drone deliveries at this point, but 
I think ultimately it's going to move in that direction. It's just a question of when. Thank you. So you have that pop up question also that could be uh, uh, quite important for us. You can respond. I think we're reaching the end of our presentation. Um, for questions that have been raised, not yet answered, we will send um, uh, a response uh, after uh, this uh, session. Uh, please feel free to complete our uh, feedback survey uh, on this link. And uh, of course, if there's any further question after uh, this, uh, this presentation, please feel free to email us. Uh, you have our details and uh, we would like to thank you for spending your time with us today on this um, uh, session. Thank you, everybody.